So thank you all for joining. This is day five of the uh, bra making tutorials or virtual sew alongs. So I started them on Monday um, just because I know a lot of people, almost everybody really, um, unless you're like a health worker, um, is at home. And uh, this is something that has given me motivation this week to stay positive. I know during these times we definitely, definitely, definitely need creativity in our lives. Um, so I'm gonna give, just like every day this week, I'm gonna give three minutes, um, five minutes, but three minutes from now for people to sign in. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section below um, and I will try to answer them as I do the live. Um, if you miss this week's live, I on Monday I did peak elastic, how to sew peak elastic. On Tuesday I did how to sew uh, photo elastic. The days are just mixing in together. Uh, Wednesday I did how to or what tension you should apply when sewing elastic. Uh, Thursday I did underwire channeling, and then today I left the easiest one uh, for last is how to attach shoulder straps. Not hard at all, just kind of a lot of steps. And when my students come to my workshops, my repeat students, they're like, I remember everything. I remember how to sew peak elastic, but the damn straps, I always forget how to do. Uh, so this will be great for you because I will be saving these lives on my IGTV, as well as doing a blog post, as well as putting it on YouTube. Uh, so there are many ways that you can watch this afterwards. Um, and this is day five. so. So I kind of tested this out this week to see what it was like and I love it uh, I think you guys love it too and most of people are gonna be quarantined next week um, so if you have any ideas for more lives next week please bubble them up because I would love to do that I do have a really exciting announcement tomorrow I'm actually taking one of my bra making workshops online um, so last weekend I uh, announced four workshops that I'm doing this summer, but because of the way that the world has turned upside down in the past week, I have bumped it up and we're gonna do it online next week. And if you can't make it, um, that's okay because I'm gonna save it and there's I use a platform for my other online courses. So I'm gonna save it so you can access it there. Um, Miss Rhonda said, hey Madeline, I can't wait to attend one of your classes on my bucket list. I can't wait till the world gets back to normal so you can make one of my workshops. Um, they really are a lot of fun. Um, so one more minute until everybody joins. I see that Deloise joined too. Um, she's coming to my April workshop. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it's still gonna happen um, and that the world gets in a better place by then. Um, so. 305, would love to know how to rub off a ready to wear sports bra. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, cool, I might do that next week. Um, I think it'd be a little bit more than, I, I'll think about it, I'll, we'll, we'll figure something out. Um, so let's get started. Today, have, I wish I could say happy Friday, but this week was a doozy. Um, so I left the easiest tutorial for the last, so how to sew shoulder straps elastics. So itinerary for this IG live videos, I'm gonna go over shoulder strap elastics, uh, different types and why you would use each of them. And then I'm gonna do a uh, live demo and that's it. Um, again, definitely send me your recommendations for IG lives next week and look at my classes, my classes on, on Listen Online because, excuse me, I just ate lunch, um, because I um, listed a uh, how to draft an underwire bra pattern online and it's over 80% off. Yeah, that's insane. Um, so let's go over different strap elastics. Um, so I have all my little schools here that I have um, here. So why do you use strap elastics? Um, elastic shoulder strap elastics. So this distance on a woman, uh, some people are short torso, some people are um, long torso, can vary so much um, that we use strap elastics to kind of give a little bit of you know leeway between fitting. Um, on a medium barret, I can use uh, 
13 inches and it can fit most the finish length from here from strap point to the back band is uh, 13 inches and it fits most um, medium large and small so it just kind of depends on um, the length of your torso also if you think that if you had if you, it offers comfort so elastic shoulder straps offer comfort um, because if you think that they're carrying the weight, they're not carrying all the weight, they're carrying like 10% of the weight of the breast. Remember, your band is what is doing like 80% of the job or most of the job. Um, but if you think about it, if you had non-stretch elastic uh, shoulder straps, that would kind of dig into your shoulders and it'd be heavy and it wouldn't be comfortable. So elastic shoulder straps, they allow for um, comfort as well as you know, a little give with the sizing. Um, there are different widths um, and different qualities too. So the one that I'm using today is a shiny shoulder strap elastic, but it has this little pico edge on the side. You guys, my nails are ratchet right now too. How bad is this? Um, I think every girl is in that state right now. Um, so you have a shiny shoulder strap elastic. This one has a pico edge right here. Um, so it's a little decorative edge. And this is the one I'm using for my tutorial. Um, you also have three quarters and inch wide. This is what I use for my uh, XL, 2XL, 3XL, 4XL gals. Um, so this really helps uh, to keep up um, the girls uh, for larger sizes. The most common size that I use though is 3 eighths of an inch. 3 eighths of an inch, half an inch. Um, anywhere between uh, 13 millimeters and 15 millimeters. So this is like 3 eighths of an inch. Um, so all of these two are listed in the web shop. Um, so I sell them by the yard as well as I sell them in uh, uh, elastic trimmings kit. Love your makeup today. Thanks, I put on some bright lipstick to kind of put me in a better mood. Um, let's see if any uh, questions came up. I want a bra with wool as padding because I have problems with Swedish cold climate. Um, you can use a sweater knit if you want. I know there are a lot of sweater knits. The, the thing that you want to uh, keep in mind is that most of the wools, you want to make sure that it stretches and it has spandex because it will stretch out, but it won't recover. So that spandex helps you to recover. So if you're going to use um, like a sweater knit, uh, you know, because it is cold, make sure that you use a lining such as stretch mesh that has that spandex in it. So when it stretches out, uh, it'll recover. Um, that's my suggestion. Okay, so let's turn this around here and I will show you where we're going to get started. Okay, so this is a Barrett Bralette. Uh, uh, one, this is the Gold Barrett Bralette Kit. Um, it's available in the web shop right now, and it has this Live, Laugh, Love band at the bottom. It is super soft, too. That Gold Lorex, so you, most people think that Gold Lorex is very itchy, but it's actually not that itchy. It's really soft on the inside. And this as well, people think that because it's gold, it's itchy, but it's lined with a really soft stretch mesh. Okay, so I straps can be either in the front or in the back. So your rings and sliders. Um, this is what's called a boutique strap. So this means that the adjustable part is in the front so that you can adjust it from the front, not the back. I know a lot of women prefer that because it's really hard to adjust a bra, the sliders from the back. Um, you also want to make sure that your rings and sliders are the same width as your strap elastic. So you can get away with going like an eighth of an inch larger. I've done it before. If I've run out of, you know, a rings or sliders, I've gone up one. So if my strap elastic is half an inch, I've gone up to five eighths of an inch. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to go smaller because then you won't be able to uh, adjust it. It'll just be way too tight and crammed in there. Um, so the first step, I don't think I need actually need to demo this, but if you're at their strap point, um, you want to wrap your strap point around a ring and then sew a straight stitch and then you're going to trim close to the stitching um, now the part that my students always get tripped up about so let's walk over to the machine i'll show you um, so my students always get tripped up about how to put the um, strap elastic on the slider on this back here okay so the way that you do this is think of this as a belt buckle so you are going to feed it through one end 
up and over that, see this center bar? You're gonna put it over this center bar in the center. And then I actually sometimes cut my uh, strap elastic at an angle at the end. It helps it with feeding it through. So you want it to go up and over that center bar. What you don't want to do, and that what a lot of students do over and over again. Let me take this out. This is the number one mistake. Is you want it to be fed through that center bar. What you don't want to do is you don't want to put it over this bar, the sidebar. That's a no-no. Um, so you want to feed it up and over the center bar and then down again. So that it looks like this. So you want this from, from this edge to this edge, you want that to be about three quarters of an inch or a half of an inch or an inch, anywhere between half an inch and an inch. And we are gonna sew a straight stitch from as close to the metal as possible. Um, and in order to do so, you're gonna have to change your needle position, position or adjust your needle position. So if you see here, you don't wanna put this metal underneath the presser foot. You want to put it just to the side of the presser foot. But if I do that, I'm a little too far away. So if you see my needles, my needle's right here. So I'm gonna adjust my needle position. Wait. So that it is close to the metal as possible. And then I'm gonna sew a, I've reduced the stitch length to about 1.5 or two to make it really tight, the stitch is really tight, and I sew it back and forth. Uh, four times is good. I feel like the more the better, because you don't want that uh, coming out. Also, if your my machine does have a bar tack setting, and I usually use it on this um, to sew this, but I know a lot of people don't have a bar tack uh, stitch on their machine, so I'm doing it with a straight stitch, assuming that you don't have that. Um, so I'm going to clip my thread tails because nobody likes a hairy bra, and so that is my strap. So I've made my strap. And now I am going to, let me trim this a little bit so it's nice and clean right next to that stitch line. Okay, so now I've trimmed it. So now you are going to, with the bra, wrong side face up. You are gonna feed this through. And then, you remember how in the first step we went up and over the center bar? We're gonna do the same thing. So up and over the center bar. Somebody asked, I have a question. I was watching a video last night from a YouTuber and was making a bralette and she mentioned a stretch straight stitch. Is that a long stitch or is that something else? Um, that's a lightning stitch. So that's a lightning stitch. It kind of just goes back and forth. Um, I don't use it. I use either a straight stitch or a zigzag stitch, just my preferred choice. Um, if you search my blog, though, I th I'm pretty sure I have an old post about a lightning stitch, so you might want to search that. Um, so then you, once you put it up and over the center bar, so this distance right here should be about one and a half, two inches. Um, from the ring to the middle of the slider. So you want to give it um, room for you because your elastic is going to stretch out over time, um, but you don't want to put it like all the way here. So I think it's just um, prettier when it is about an inch to an inch and a half away. 
So once you put it up and over the center bar, you've made your straps. And the last step is to just attach it to the back of the bralette. Um, so for smaller size, I've marked my strap point right here with my pin. So for larger or for smaller uh, uh, sizes, you can do, uh, you can just attach it to the top of the bralette back band, extra small, small, medium. But if you are a larger size, you can attach it at the top and on the bottom. Let me flip this out really quickly and you can see. So you can attach this for a larger size. This is an extra large. You can attach it at the top and then all the way at the bottom too. This will help it give a little bit more stability at the back so it doesn't pull up. Um, so I'm going to do that uh, on this side. So all you have to do is lay your strap elastic. Let me measure it so that it's the same length. I don't have a tape measure with me as the other one. Okay. And then I'm just going to lay this under. And then I'm going to put it at the top of the back band as well as at the part of the back band where the uh, bottom elastic attaches to the bottom of the bralette. So, let's right side out. And I'm gonna use my bar tack because my machine does have it and it is way more stable than a uh, straight stitch. Why are you sewing with the elastic strap at the bottom? Uh, for more support. And that's it. So I have attached the shoulder. I've made and attached the shoulder strap elastics to the bra. Let me walk back over. Okay. So I have attached the straps at the bralette here. This kit is available in the web shop. It's a really pretty gold uh, lace uh, with this really soft bottom band. So I've gone over what strap elastics are, why they're used, different types of uh, rings and sliders. Remember to match your the width of your rings and sliders to the width of your strap elastic, or maybe if you're out um, an eighth of an inch up. And then I've done a live demo. So I hope everybody, I hope next week's better for everybody. Have, everybody have a great weekend. Be sure, what are, somebody just asked, what are those scissors? Um, let me go get them really quickly. So 
So somebody just asked, what are these scissors? So these are called duck belt scissors. They're actually applique scissors. Um, and they allow you to get really close to the stitch line without, if you had like eight inch gingers, it might be hard to do. Um, so that's why I use these. I have a blog post that links to my Amazon list where you can shop my favorite bra making tools. So if you go on my website, uh, search uh, favorite bra making tools and it will come up. Um, so, Send me your recommendations for next week. Um, I won't be doing it on Wednesday because I am doing an online virtual workshop for how to draw a uh, bra pattern um, completely from scratch. Uh, I will be announcing that tomorrow, but if you wanna get a little sneak peek, you can go on my website, go on the classes list. Um, so have a great weekend, and I will hopefully see you on Monday for another IG Live. Stay safe, Stay healthy, everybody, and wash your hands.